Um, let me, uh, I want to talk about this um, survey that was done. Um, it's a survey that's done, it's called the American Dream 2021 Snapshot. The results were just published recently. And it was, um, it's put out by the Archbridge Institute. No idea who the Archbridge Institute is. Don't know. My guess is it's a, it's a conservative, um, conservative think tank institute, but, but it's hard to tell. I'm trying to figure out who they are, but I, I, it's not clear to me who they are. So they have a, a, a bunch of different questions that they ask people about inequality, about opportunities, and I thought the answers were really interesting. So, you know what, let's, uh, let's do this. Um, I'm going to try to do this. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, can you guys see that? Is it big enough? Big enough on your screens to see that? All right. That way you can uh, you can uh, walk along with me as I go through this. Let's uh, just enlarge this so we can see it a little better. There we go. All right. So which of the following do you consider to be the most important goal of public policy? Um, so growing the gap, closing the gap between rich and poor. About 24% of people said that. That's a lot. Uh, notice that it skews dramatically towards the young. 18 to 29 is 28 percent, 30 to 44 is 31 percent. As you go older, it's 20 percent among uh, 45 to 60 plus. Okay. So closing the gap between rich and poor, young people think that's an important goal or the most important goal. Older people do not. What about levels of education? Well, the more educated they are, the more you think that's the goal of public policy. The more educated you are, the more you think that's the goal of public policy. I think that's quite interesting. They also divided by race. There are not a lot of differences. 23 white, 27 black, 24 Hispanic. A little bit more on the minority side, but not a lot. One percentage point with regard. It's the other, whatever the hell the other is that are really about closing the bank. They score 31%, right? 31%. Um, you can also look at this in income. Um, so let's see, how do I, how do I, I guess you have to, to income, you have to go to the next page. We'll, go, we'll do income in a minute. Let's do this other stuff first. Ah, this thing is bouncing around for me. All right. Um, there we go. Ensuring everyone has a fair chance of achieving success. Now here, of course, it depends what you mean by fair chance. But let's assume that fair chance means there are no barriers. There's no racism or, or government-sponsored racism. There's no, um, everybody's equal for the law. So what we would consider is, is, is kind of what the government should be doing. Well, here, 41% think this is the goal. And of course, this one skews dramatically towards older people. Dramatically towards older people. Here, education matters less. This is really driven by age. So the older you are, the more likely it is that you want a fair chance of achieving success. But still, 31% of all young people think that that's the primary goal of public policy. If you look by race, again, not a lot of differences by race. Not a lot of differences. Third goal of public policy. Most important goal of public policy. Ensuring Americans do not live in poverty. Here is also driven dramatically by age. Just flip. The younger you are, the more, the more inclined you will be with this. So young people tend to care about poverty and gap, inequality. Older people seem to care about opportunity, rule of law. And then there's none of the above, which is probably what I would have said, right? Uh, but that's only 9%, and again, skews young to old. So young people, 
overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly take on the position of nobody lives in poverty, we close the gap. I am happy to think goal of public policy. I don't think it's a goal of public policy at all, but I don't want people living in poverty. But closing the gap between rich and poor is not important. And it's good to see the significant number of Americans agree with that. All right, let's see. I don't know what, oh, here the income. Not a lot of differences across income. On all the questions. It's not a question of income. It's not a question of class. Your opinion on this issue is, whoops, your opinion on this issue is all about age. Go back to, go back, whoops, can't do it that way. Sorry, guys. Uh, go back to here. It's all about age. It's all about younger you are, the more you care about the poor. The more you care about the gap between rich and poor. The older you are, the less you care about that. That's kind of the, the, the reality of America we live in today. All right, let's, uh, let's go down and look at... Ah, this, is, this, this technology sucks. Okay. There we have it. You have it there in your picture. All right, so here, what does equality mean to you? This is interesting. What does equality mean to you? Everyone ends up in the same place. Communism. Egalitarianism. Only 4% of Americans believe that's what equality... They're the ones who say equality is important, but that's what they think equality means. Only 4%. Now, that is good news. Really good news. Now, young people, it's 6%, but 30 to 44-year-olds, it's only 2%. So equal outcome is not a goal of any of these people. When there is equality before the law and people have a fair chance to pursue opportunities regardless of where they started, that's what equality means to them. 66% of Americans stand by this. Again, young people only 60%, old people 72%, but they all, I mean, a, a majority of Americans think it's about equality before the law. The more educated you are, the more you believe this. But young people generally believe this. Or, uh, sorry, no high school degree and BA plus generally believe this, all in the 60s and 70%. Racially, again, uh, blacks and Hispanics lower, but not by a massive amount. And it's an, still a majority of them think that this is what equality means. Now, this is really good news. Well, uh, income, yeah, the wealthy you are, the more the rule of law is what matters to you. The poorer, the less what it matters to you. But generally, again, it's a majority in every one of those income categories. Everyone starts in the same position. That's what equality means to them. It's kind of the equality of opportunity. 13% of young people, 9%, 7% of older people. Again, not big numbers not big numbers, are going to, you know, the, the, the communism or the semi-communism kind of uh, view, the egalitarian view. Egalitarianism in this survey is not popular among anybody. Again, I think good news. Where people who start with more, right, whoops, Sorry, where people who start with more disadvantages are given tools that could help them catch up with others. All right, this is state intervention. This is the welfare state, but not to achieve equality. Give them tools. 11%, 13 14% of young people. This actually is quite encouraging. Egalitarianism is not that popular with anybody out there. 
so you know the the the, the educated seem to have the most affinity towards redistribution but not towards equality of outcome not towards kind of a a a, a um an egalitarianism Right. Let's see if there's anything else interesting here. What is the best way for an individual? Oh, this is interesting. What is the best way for an individual to climb the income ladder? A job. 50% of Americans think it's a job. That's a good answer. All right. Well-designed government assistance programs. The welfare state. Only 8%. A college degree, okay, education, 16%. High degree of family and social support, 15%. So what is the best way for an individual to climb the income ladder? It's work, education, and family support. The amount of people who, who believe that the government's job is to do this it's 8%, less than 10%. Again, that's good news. <laughs> age of says, uh, no, not age of. Edward asks, what about marrying someone rich? Wasn't provided as an option. What is the most important precondition in enabling people to climb the income ladder? Strong labor market and high level of economic growth. 34%. I wish it was 90, but that's great. Krish, thank you. That is incredibly generous. Wow, 300 Australian dollars. Thank you, Krish. Um, 34%. Yes, only 27% of young people, 40% of old, but still 34% of Americans still believe that it's strong labor markets and high level of economic growth. Low levels of inequality are preconditioned to enable people to climb the income ladder. Only 6%. Stable family structure. Okay. Not completely nuts. 17%. Strong government social safety net. Look at this. What is the most important precondition in enabling people to climb the income ladder? If I'd asked you how you think Americans would score strong government social safety net, how many of you would have said 5%? Very few. That's good. That's good news. Increased access to higher education, 24%. Okay. I don't think that's right, but not bad. Again, not a government program necessarily. All right, let's see if there's anything else. All right, that's conclusions. All right, we're done. So I come away from this, you know, pretty, pretty good, pretty positive, pretty positive. Uh, no, thank you. No, thank you. 50 Canadian dollars. Thank you. We must be close to 600 now. I think so. I think we're probably, I don't know, 50 to 100 bucks away. But I think we're pretty close. So I come away pretty positive. Americans seem to think, a majority of Americans think to think that equality refers to equality before the law. Equality of, you know, of rights, of liberty. At least to some extent. They, they're not clear exactly. Definitions are not super clear. Right? Americans seem to think that the way to progress is by getting a job. And the way to have a higher income job is by having an economy that is productive, that is growing, that produces jobs. Yeah. Yes, too many Americans still believe that we need to, that the main job of government is to eradicate poverty. Too many Americans still believe that there's job of government is to reduce inequality, but not as many people as I would have expected. So I come away from this poll far more positive about the American people than I imagined, than I thought. 
Um, I'm a little relieved by reading it because things look pretty bleak out there. Maybe things are not as bad as we all thought they were. Maybe. Hard to tell. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.